Holy Harvest. I'd like to first give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'd like to give honor to Pastor Reeves. I'd like to give honor to you as well. And to those in social media, we say good morning to you as well. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to ask if you would turn with me to the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians. The fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians. And when you have found it, I'm going to ask if you would stand in reverence to the reading of God's Word. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and let's just read verses 17 through 20 together. Amen? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have permitted unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Father God, we come to you this day in the blessed name of Jesus. Father God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your power. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for forgiveness. We thank you for deliverance. And we thank you for healing. Amen. Father God, we just ask in the blessed name of Jesus, let your word go forth with power and might, Father God. Father God, draw the sinner and draw the backslider to you this day in the blessed name of Jesus. Father God, let your word go beyond the walls of this building. Draw those folks in social media unto you this day in the blessed name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to use for my subject this morning, for just a few moments, what it means to be a Christian. What it means to be a Christian. Here in our text today, we find the Apostle Paul writing a letter to an early church in Corinth. He's writing this letter because false teachers had infiltrated this church. And they were challenging Paul's integrity and they were challenging his authority as an apostle. They even accused Paul of pocketing the money that he had collected to help poverty-stricken Jews who were living in Jerusalem. But Paul was a man of character. Yes. And Paul reminded this church that while he was in their midst and his personal life, was always honorable. And that his message of salvation was true. And he was urging this church to deal with these troublemakers in the early church. And to believe the word of God, but not the lies of his adversary. So as you study this text, you will find that this church was talented but it was hard. It lacked the spiritual power to influence the community around it. These were saved folks, but they weren't growing spiritually. And Paul was writing to explain to them what it means to be a Christian. Amen. And what it means to be a child of God. So in those passages of scripture that you and I just read, Paul said, therefore, if any man be 
in Christ. Yeah. To be in Christ means to be united with Christ. Yeah. It means to be unified with God through Jesus Christ. I am unified with Chrissy because we have the same blood flowing through our veins. Yes. We have the blood of William Reese Sr. and the blood of Annie J. Miller flowing through yes. our veins. Yes. So we are unified by the blood of our parents. Yes. You and I, if we're saved, are unified by the Holy Ghost. Yes. So he said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man or woman be saved, any man who is indwelled with God's spirit, he said, you are a new creature. Amen. But he tells us how we became new creatures in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. And I'm going to go there. It says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, Paul is still talking to believers. He said, in whom ye also trusted. After you repent, after you gave your life to Christ, you became a new creature, but something happened to you. Why did you believe? Well, Paul says you believe because you heard the word of truth. You are listening to the word of truth right now. Yes. The word of God is the word of truth. When you heard the word of truth, you were convicted in your spirit and you came to Jesus as you are. Yes. You came to Jesus as you are because the word of truth was the gospel of your salvation. It ignited your spirit. Spirit. How did it ignite your spirit? It ignited your spirit because you believed. Yes. You believed and your spirit was ignited. You accepted God through Jesus Christ and then it said you were sealed with the spirit of promise. When I gave my life to Christ, I was sealed with the spirit of a promise. The old Billy died, yes. but a new Billy came into existence. Yes. A Billy that was acceptable unto God, a Billy that was sanctified unto God that did not exist before. Yes. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus in order to enter the kingdom of God, he said you must be born of water and of spirit. Mm -hmm. It's a two-part process, church, that happens simultaneously. When we get saved, Jesus said, you must be born first of water. Yes. Water represents that cleansing agent that God uses to wash away the defilement of our very own rebellion. And then this Water is found in 1 John 1 and 7, and that water is the blood of Jesus. Yeah. It's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us. Yeah. It makes us acceptable unto him. Yeah. It sanctifies us. It freshens us. It renews us for God. And at the same time, God says you are sealed with the spirit of promise. You've been sealed by the Holy Ghost. He's called the spirit of promise because God promises that once you become part of his family, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Thereby we cry, Abba, Father. You don't have the right to call God your Father unless you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And you can't get the Holy Spirit without Jesus. When you see those people at the Grammy Rewards and they say, we want to first give honor to God for this new hip-hop album. <laughs> if they don't have the Spirit of God living in them, He is not their Father. Amen. 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 And they got a rude thing awakening if they don't get right with God. 
Let me get back to the text. Paul said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any man be unified with God through Jesus Christ, if any man become part of God's family, Paul says he's a new creature. It's a picture of a caterpillar being transformed into a butterfly. Yes. Before we came to Christ, we were crawling around like a caterpillar. Yes. But after we come to Christ, we're just like beautiful butterflies yes. for God. Amen? Yes. And I'm glad that I'm a butterfly. Yes. Yes. I don't know about you, because caterpillars, well, I won't go there. <laughs> Now, Paul says, before we came to Christ, Paul said that all of us were dead in trespasses and in sins. Amen. We were dead because we didn't have the Holy Ghost living inside of us. Yes. We were enemies of God, and we were doomed. We were doomed because all of us were supposed to spend eternity completely separated from God. As a matter of fact, Paul says that we were the children of wrath. Yeah. It means that we followed in accordance to our own fleshly desires. These desires were cooked up in our minds. Yeah. And then we acted out those desires in our flesh. Yes. And we did that because the Holy Ghost was not living inside of us. But when we came to God through Jesus Christ, we received the spirit of promise and therefore we are now identified with God <laughs> through Jesus Christ for the first time. So Paul said old things are passed away and behold all things become new. Yes. It happened in the church in Corinth. And it happens that way today. Yes. But you couldn't tell the difference between the saved folks and the unsaved folks in that church. And sometimes, even in a modern church today, you can't tell the difference. Yes. And when you can't tell the difference, Paul is saying, there's a problem. Yes. There was a problem in Corinth, and it's a problem in our modern church today. Yes. The people were not growing. They were not maturing spiritually. They were saved. They were sealed with God's spirit. But they weren't the best representatives for God. Church, there's something that they needed to do. And there's something that we need to do today. And if we do it sooner, it's better than later. If you have your Bibles... I'm going to ask if you would turn with me to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. And this is something that all of us, after we're saved, we need to do. And this is what Paul says. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, not when I'm just with you, but he says, but now much more in my absence. Paul is saying, even when I'm not there, be obedient to God. Yes. And he says, to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, to work out your salvation doesn't mean that you're going to lose it. Because the Bible tells us that nothing shall separate us from the love of God once we've been sealed. Amen. But Paul is saying that we need to grow. Yeah. We need to mature. Yeah. We need to be ambassadors for God. And we have to do that individually. And then we can come together and grow as a body collectively. Amen. Now Paul says one of the ways to grow, Paul says that we need to be crucified with Christ. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Paul says, I spiritually die to myself. I die to my flesh. I die to my lust. 
I die to my desire. Even though I die, Paul says, nevertheless, I live. Yeah. In other words, I live in accordance now, not to the will of my flesh, but I live accordance to the will of God. God's will has now become Paul's will. Yeah. And God's will now needs to become our will. Yes. Yes. I wanted to move back to San Diego for a long time. But that may not be God's will. Mm -hmm. So my will needs to be God's will yeah. in every area of my life. Your will needs to be God's will in every single area of your life. Yeah. How does Paul do it? Well, he tells us how to do it, not by his own power. Paul says he does it because Christ lived it within him. He died to himself so that Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit, can grow inside of him. Christ is now his GPS. Christ is now his compass. Now, how does he make it work? He tells us how he makes it work. He says, by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul is saying, church, we got to step out on faith. Yeah. We got to act on our faith. Amen. And we got to grow so that we don't stay on the same level. Amen. This church was staying on the same level. God doesn't want us to stay on the same level. Amen. Some of you have little babies here today. Do you want them to stay babies forever? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> no. God doesn't want us to stay baby Christians forever. Amen. God wants us to grow. Yes. Yeah. Now, one way, another thing that we need to do is found in Romans 12 and 1. And Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. The mercies of God are the tools that God has given every believer so that we can be successful as we are traveling on our Christian journey. Amen. Forgiveness is a mercy yeah. of God. Yeah. Being justified by faith yeah. is a mercy of God. Being redeemed is a mercy of God. Being grafted into the root of Abraham is a mercy of God. He said, therefore, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, that ye present your flesh as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God. Because Paul was saying that if we can get control of our flesh, then we can be transformed yeah. by the renewing of our minds. Amen. In the Old Testament, what they did is they gave sheep and oxen as sacrifices unto God. Jesus offered himself as the perfect sacrifice. Now the scripture says that we have been baptized into Jesus Christ. It means that we came into a covenant relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Now if we were baptized into his life, we had to be baptized into his death. God gave his best through Jesus. Mm -hmm. So what this scripture is saying that God wants us to give our best. Mm -hmm. And the best that we can give is by presenting our bodies mm -hmm. and presenting our flesh unto God. Mm -hmm. And then he says and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you've been transformed by the renewing of your mind, you will be able to see things.
things the way God sees things. Mm -hmm. I believe sometimes I was talking to someone recently, and I'm throwing myself in there. I believe sometimes we stay single because our minds haven't been renewed. Our minds haven't been transformed. Yeah. When I was real, real young, one of the movie stars that we all liked was Halle Berry. And you know, years later, some of us are still at that stage. And God's got something else different, yeah. something else better. Yeah. And we're still trying to get with, chase her. Yeah. God says, I got something for you. When you were 20, you want this guy 6'4 and built like LeBron James. And God says, I've got something different for you. Now you're 50, you still want this guy 6'4 and built like LeBron James. And Paul is saying, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is acceptable, good, and perfect, and most importantly, will of God. He's saying that we need to grow. Church, we need to be crucified. We need to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. And then we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we can be the best representatives for God. We will be growing and we will be maturing and we will be developing what the Bible calls the mind of Christ. When I have the mind of Christ, I understand God's plan for this world. Mm -hmm. I understand it's God's plan for men and women to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. I understand if they don't do that, they're going to spend eternity separated from God. And when I have the mind of Christ, then I'm going to act on that plan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to act on that plan and try to win as many people over to God's kingdom and take them from the devil's kingdom mm -hmm. when I have the mind of Christ. That's right. Amen. 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 Let me get back to our text. I'm going back to 2 Corinthians. <clears throat> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now, in verse 18, Paul says, and all things are of God. What is Paul saying? Paul is saying that it is God is the one who takes the initiative. He's the one that takes the initiative to redeem us, mm -hmm. to sustain us and to bring his plan for our lives to completion mm -hmm. as long as we are walking in accordance to his will. Amen. Now, if we're not in accordance to his will, we go to a different path mm -hmm. and we follow our plans and not necessarily God's plans. But when we are in accordance to God's will, his plan for our lives will come to completion. Paul wants you to know that you serve an awesome God. Yes. He wants you to know that you serve a great God. You know in the book of Deuteronomy, the writer says he is the great, he is the mighty, and he is the terrible God. But you know that means he is the great, he is the mighty, and he is an awesome God. Amen. And I love that song by Darling Jack. She says, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above yes. with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. He woke you up this morning. That's because you serve an awesome God. He allowed you to put your clothes on this morning because you serve an awesome God. When you get home, there's food in your refrigerator because you have an awesome God. He allowed you to wake up in your right mind this morning because you serve an awesome God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. Morning, if God didn't say breathe, yeah. you wouldn't move this morning if 
God didn't say move. In God, we live and move and have our being. We serve an awesome God. And all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself. Reconciled us means that we can have the peace, not just the peace of God, but we can have peace with God. When we repent of our sins and we confess the name of Jesus, the Bible says that he is the propitiation for our sins. It means that God's wrath, God's anger is turned away from our sins and we are reconciled to God. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And then it says, and he had given us the spirit, the ministry of reconciliation. When we have the ministry of reconciliation, it means that we go and tell people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It means that we need to go out and tell people that are unsavory about Jesus. Mm -hmm. We need to go and tell the alcoholic about Jesus. Right. We need to go tell the pimp about mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. We need to tell the prostitute about Jesus. Jesus. We need to tell that young guy that his hands are sagging. We need to tell him about Jesus. When we see that girl with the yellow, green, and purple hair and tattoos all over and tongue ring coming out, we need to tell her about Jesus. Because he died for the sins, not for harvest ministry, but he died for the sins of the whole world. We need to tell him about Jesus. Amen. And try to reconcile them to God. Amen. That's what Paul was saying. But we can't do that, church, if we don't grow. Amen. And this church was not growing. He says in verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ, it means that Christ was empowered by God the Father. When Jesus Christ turned the water into wine, he was empowered by his heavenly Father. When Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 5,000 people, he was empowered by his heavenly Father. When Jesus cast out the legion of demons, he was empowered by his Father. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, he was empowered by his father. When Jesus went down to the lower parts of the earth and brought up divinity, he was empowered by his father. When Jesus woke up on Easter Sunday morning, he was empowered by God the Father. We are empowered by the Holy Ghost through Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are a single parent this morning, you need the power yes. of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a good wife or a good husband, you will need the power yes. of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. If you want to go back to school or get some more training, you will need the power of the Holy Ghost. If you want to invest in something, yes. you need the wisdom and the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need God. In every area of our lives. Amen. That's what Paul wants us to understand. Jesus Christ had a purpose. And his purpose was to make a roadway for us. Mm -hmm. So that we can have peace with God. Mm -hmm. That's all he wants us to know. He wants us to have peace with God. And then he says, Now then, we believers are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God I know that we are ambassadors for Jesus 
Because when Jesus ascended, before he ascended into heaven, Jesus said, all power is given unto me. That's right. All power is in my hand. And he said, go ye therefore and teach all men, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. If that's not being an ambassador, I don't know what it is. All of us are ambassadors. Amen. Some churches teach this was just for the disciples. No, yeah. this is just for us too. Amen. We're supposed Amen. to do this too. Yeah. This is supposed to go from generation to generation till Jesus comes back again. That's right. Church, what does it mean to you to be a Christian? Mm. What it means to be a Christian, it means to be an ambassador for God. Yes. Amen. It means to be an ambassador that God can use. Amen. It means to be an ambassador that God can be proud of. If we don't, if we're not going to be used by God, He's going to pull our candlestick. And He's going to put us up on a shelf. And He's going to use someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to get into the kingdom. But we're not going to get the reward that we could have gotten. Yeah. And I believe that when we get up there, it's going to be a little bit like that True for Consequences show with Bob Barker. Mm -hmm. And I believe God's going to be opening up all kinds of doors and show us the things he could have had. That's right. I really believe he's going to show yes. us what we could have had. Yes. I believe it in all my being. He's going to yes. show us what we could have had. Yes. Are you a Christian? Do you know what it means? To be a Christian. It's not just a title. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. And it's a lifestyle of reconciling men and women to God. Yeah. But in order to do that church, we got to grow. And I, we got to be crucified. We got to put time in the Word. And we got to live in accordance to the will of God. Father God, we come to you right now. We come to you this day in the blessed name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your power. We thank you for salvation. And we thank you for deliverance. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. And Father God, we just ask in the blessed name of Jesus. Touch us, Father God. Touch our hearts. Help us to be better ambassadors for you. Help us to be ambassadors that you can be proud of. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.